Uh, good morning, everyone. A uh, few words about myself. Um, uh, uh, I joined GTK one year ago as a bedrock geologist. I previously worked for a consulting company as a project manager in a rock engineering group. And that, that, why, that is why I was asked to give a presentation concerning underground spaces. And uh, luckily, we had a quite fresh case study going on concerning photogrammetry in a railway tunnel. And that will be my topic today. And uh, Heike will change my slides today. Yes, thank you. So short uh, content here, uh, introduction, our goals and methods, and then results and summary. Next. Thank you. <clears throat> so about background. Uh, uh, when we are talking about underground spaces, it's first of all combination of, of mechanics and geology. And uh, geologist has an important role here uh, to give information to uh, designers, rock engineers, uh, to describe rock mass characteristics and, uh, for example, properties of discontinuities. And uh, 3D documentation here is uh, one approach to it. Next one. And concerning remote sensing methods, there are a wide range of different methods. But uh, when we talk about underground, I would say that photogrammetry and different kinds of laser scannings will, will do the work. They can be uh, digital cameras taking photographs or laser scannings, or, uh, either uh, solid stations or mobile scanners. Or in some cases, you can uh, fly drone in the in underground space. Next one. Uh, about photogrammetry, it's basically that you take pictures, a lot of pictures in different positions uh, against your object. And the uh, technique called here is uh, structure from motion photogrammetry. And it then, then gives you color 3D image as a point cloud. <clears throat> and the uh, first uh, thing you need to do is uh, you just take pictures and let the computer do the rest of the work, combining the pictures and giving, giving the colored, textured 3D image. And what you need to take uh, into account is that the pictures need to overlap themselves at least 60%. Uh, if you exceed over 80%, it's not efficient anymore. Um, you need to have light, <clears throat> uh, good lighting conditions. Uh, and that might be a tricky, tricky job. If you have a big uh, space, you need to, to light. Mm, you need to take care of how you georeference your model, how to put the model in the right position and orientation and scale. Otherwise, it just lies in space. And you, you, need, you need to think how time consuming uh, photo shooting might be uh, also in the field and doing the data processing. <clears throat> and here, object matters uh, depending on the size of the object. Also, is it the traffic tunnel? Is it the uh, under construction? Uh, construction phase, or is it a small sewage tunnel? How much you want to spend time there, and is it is it safe and possible to go in there? And the lower picture shows side view of the uh, imaging in a in a tunnel uh, covering the whole cross section. Next one. <clears throat> then about our case, we have this 180 meters long operating railway tunnel located in southeast Finland on a Rapakivi domain. And uh, this Rapakivi uh, 
was really homogeneous and uh, had an excellent quality, so it didn't have short grid lining like they usually usually do. So this was a perfect place for us to test our methods. And luckily it also had a reasonable train traffic because we had to take into account the train timetables. Next one. So about our workflow, we had a really light uh, equipment there with us. Uh, we had this Canon digital camera on a tripod. We had two extra lights, uh, powerful lights to ensure stable and uniform lighting conditions. <coughs> uh, overall, we took over 4,000 overlapping pictures. They were, uh, the coverage was about 80%. We were able to take pictures remotely. We had an iPad <coughs> connected to the camera. But uh, after every photo, we had to turn the camera a bit to take pictures from the whole cross section. And uh, we spent there four or five days. And the active photo shooting time took 20 hours, which is quite much. But, uh, of course, train traffic has had influence for this. And then we were able to create this point cloud 3D model. And next one, please. Uh, <clears throat> what else we did in the tunnel? One group did photo shooting and one group did fracture mapping with a hand compass. I, I was in this group. Uh, the procedure went like this, that we first walk through the tunnel and mark the places that we wanted to measure concerning faults, joints, and fractures. And we had a long measuring tape to measure the distance from the tunnel opening uh, to localize the our measurement. And <clears throat> there's a compass in one picture showing there's a measurement going on. And we took dip and dip direction different joint properties like alteration, roughness, and jointed number, and also RQD. And in the last picture, uh, we took notes from water leakages. Is there, is there any moist, moist surfaces? Just a visual observation. And in some cases, we were able to uh, see the sense of movement which way the board box had moved. And next one, please. And when we got back to the office, we put those 4,000 pictures to software called Akisoft Metasafe. It's a commercial one. And we got really, really excellent quality image, 3D point cloud. Uh, really sharp and alive looking. And uh, we can see some vertical faults that are so nicely on the roof. <clears throat> Next one. Um, we put the model into a software called Cloud Compare. It's free software. And wanted to do then fracture mapping digitally with the software. Uh, first, we had to georeference the model. Uh, and we did it by using railroad geometry line and XY reference points we took from ArcMap. Uh, on the right picture, we see uh, four points in the corners of the tunnel openings uh, to put the tunnel in the right position and orientation and right scale. And the scale accuracy was less than one meter, which is really good. There's this compass tool that we could take measurements at either uh, traces or planes, plane measurements, and those uh, green squares shows they are measurements from, from four planes. And we were able to take all the same measurements like we did actually the time, for example. And I know that there's some commercial software that could take, take these properties too. And then you can export the 
uh, measurement as a text file for further use. And next one. In Cloud Compare, you can do different kind of modific modification for the Scala field if you want to highlight different directions of the planes <coughs> or, or different features, like here on red, source nice, nicely one direction of the port planes. And uh, it's easy to measure, like, to make measurements on this kind of modified uh, color too. And next one, please. Here is a um, <coughs> closer look from the roof. Uh, total of five volts so water leakage areas. And here is one one that saw moist, moist surfaces. Uh, those red dots are existing rock bolts. And on the left, pink, uh, pink rock is uh, altered. Okay, that was by alteration in, in Rapaki. Next one. <coughs> Ten results. Uh, overall, we took 66 measurements by hand compass, and then nearly 800 with the digital compass. And this is on, only numbers from the right wall. And uh, we plot the measurements on the net, and they show quite nicely that there's uh, two vertical joint jets and and horizontal jointing, and this is a typical uh, uh, orthogonal joint pattern of Rapaki granite. Uh, on the left, there is a hand compass measurement, and on the right, digital compass measurements, and they, they show a really good correlation. Uh, <coughs> uh, some poles in the direction of southwest, northeast to uh, to north, west. Yeah, well, th in that direction, uh, there's a difference uh, about 10 to 20 degrees. And I think it's because of the tunnel didn't, might be that the tunnel didn't have quite optimal uh, orientation after, after all, but uh, but this is fair enough and uh, really, really good results that we can we can try uh, trust this software and uh, digital mapping can be really useful tool here. Uh, next one, please. <clears throat> but as we were able to do with the data we got, and we were able to do some rock mass classification in terms of tunnel support. And here I have used Q system and rock mass rating. Uh, Q value source uh, for the roof is that uh, black uh, circle. Uh, it means that uh, the roof needs systematic rock bolting, and that was the case there at the moment. But uh, they are plotted on a Q chart, chart here, in the upper upper picture. The chart is a rock mass quality and rock support chart. And for the walls, triangle, black triangle there is uh, uh, reflecting that uh, walls can be left unsupported. And then I check what other results using rock mass rating. And we got 71 points, which, is, which means it's a good rock. And also meaning that uh, some spot bolting on the roof is needed. RMR gives also cohesion for the rock mass and friction angle, but we were able to calculate friction angles ourselves for every measurement we took. And the average was nearly 40, which goes between the rock mass rating results. And that's, that's good. Uh, this doesn't include nine folds that had a really thick uh, in fillings and they gave friction angles of four, which is basically nothing but uh, when you have vertical folds and big block size, it's not that critical for tunnel stability. Okay, next one. <clears throat> well, applications 
where treaty documentation can be used. It obviously has engineering and scientific purposes. I have at least some of the applications here concerning rock mass and hydrogeological models to stress analysis and helping also postpartum design. And I, I would say that this postpartum design concerning old tunnels would be really important to have have a 3D model and uh, combining the hydrogeological or hydraulic conductivity models to help optimizing postpartum design. Next one. <clears throat> and then summary. Yeah, with photogrammetry, you can get really photorealistic, textured, and colored 3D, 3D model. And uh, you have a 360 degrees view, view for different kind of inspection. And uh, it's really important that then you have this digital twin for any other further use uh, that underground space might have ahead in different construction projects. Mm. Yeah, digital mapping is really fast method after you have gained the, gained the data or the, or the model, and then you can have better statistics with a bigger data set. And the future outlook would be that uh, photogrammetry can be combined with laser scanning. And then it's really powerful tool. Then you have laser scanning and photogrammetry in the same package. And uh, uh, it would be nice that the uh, fracture mapping would be fully automatic. Uh, now, now we do it by hand using different softwares. And uh, yeah, the next step for us is to go from 3D model to more realistic uh, discrete fracture network model. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. What kind of questions do we have from the room? I'm looking on Slido here as well, if, if anybody is asked. I don't, ah, oh, Alan, yes, sorry. I can always <laughs> That's great. Go ahead, Alan. Hello, Joanna. Good Hello. to see you. Um, I'm just thinking about you know, the applications of the results of your work here in, in Estonia. Uh, if our fellow is going to start to really go for underground mining, you can see that there is a, a good, good applications for what you just present here for stability of the mines here. If you could highlight what's the most important one that this, this guys here in Estonia, they should be thinking about you know, from the results of your study in terms of stability of underground mine. Just one main highlight. <clears throat> I would say drilling in the exploration phase. Drilling and then you can, can give a first clue about what's going on with the rock mass. And that, that's the starting point to start to build up a, a rock mass model and stability analysis. Okay. <coughs> Great. Um, thank you very much. Uh, any other questions on this topic? I actually have a question on the on a previous topic. I, maybe you could even answer that. Is what are the possibilities with current technology in geophysics for exploring crystalline basement in northern Estonia without drilling deep boreholes? It's kind of an open question to anybody in the room or online. And crickets. <laughs> <clears throat> well, okay, thank you, Will. So, uh, the answer is simple. Yes, this is a way. And actually, we, we were just discussing that. Um, um, so, okay, there are 
I, I just learned uh, some new terms. This is a kind of discovery, drilling, and exploration. The exploration is never done, you know, randomly. So you and the just physics here. Uh, I think personally that uh, different uh, methods of geophysics applied and uh, machine learning, everything put together. This is a way how to how to start something. But first, we need to using existing materials. We need to show that oh, this is all realistic and and uh, those occurrences are systematic. There is some kind of pattern in using existing material. And, and then we, we start looking uh, into the kind of structures where that have, might have a, a higher potential and uh, maybe uh, worth of uh, drilling. So it's like really so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So actually, I had a pretty similar question that was before the, the presentation that, yeah, that um, the. Uh, the the thing with Estonia, well, we we are mostly talking about you know uh, um, mining in sedimentary uh, rocks and uh, and the tragedy to say of the Estonian, for example, phosphorite is that it's so loose, so it's like um, it's uh, and it was said yesterday in the presentation that in in previous uh, times there was no nearly no way to obtain a core, chill core, that is in, in coherent state. So, and only now, this amazing guys at Steiger, uh, who did the drilling, uh, were able to do it. So, so, and this is this is a, one of the main issues that uh, that the kind of like common mining methods doesn't work. Uh, you you cannot cannot use them in uh, in, in mining this phosphorite. Or it, it's very difficult or very expensive. Okay, this was my comment. All right, thank you very much.